What up, Naughty Steppers? It's Connor Whitmore here again with another review for you on the Naughty Step channel, and it's the big one. Space Laces, Never Say Die, Six Tracks, Overdrive, Let's Go. The hype for this release from Louisville-based Ian Slider has been crazy because one of bass music's most mystifying figures started to become a little more active than usual. Posting three tracks in quick succession, two of which are on this EP that followed an out of the blue collaboration with Excision released on Never Say Die. When his average prior to that was something along the lines of one track released every 18 months or so. But sure as hell these tracks, although sparse, were enough to pique the interest of thousands of people who have been tracking his every musical movement since he started out. Coming into recognition with his remix of the track X-Rated by Excision on the remix album of the same name, before getting involved with the dubstep supergroup Destroyed, comprising of Excision, Downlink and KJ Sorka, having a say in five tracks on their album The Invasion. Bearing in mind that in between that Excision remix and all the Destroyed stuff, he loses absolutely everything that he has been working on up until that point because his hard drive crashes. I mean, can you imagine? Not that I would want to remind him, but I think it's a very important piece of context for understanding his lack of exposure to the bass world and subsequent lack of content. In turn, he has come across as someone who speaks mostly through his music, not having a massive social media presence, just letting the tunes do the talking. Very unique. Honestly, if I was about to get the ball rolling with my creation as he was then, to have it all lost so suddenly, it would take a huge amount to get back into the production rhythm, but here he is now, so props to him. Following his work with Destroyed, he releases Digital Gangster and Dungeons and Dragons, both incredibly impactful in terms of Slider making a name for himself in bass music generally. The latter for me being up there with the most complete dark electronic music tracks of the last few years. He collaborates with Excision again on the electrifying track Push It Up on Excision's Codename X album before going down a lighter, more electro, disco-inspired route with Say It Ain't So. It's at this point that he is snapped up by Never Say Die to release tracks on two different compilations, Bug Bass and Cruise Control, which are released either side of yet another collaboration with Excision entitled Throwing Elbows, arguably 2016's most famous bass song, and the third track on Excision's most recent album, Virus. Following Cruise Control, we have, <laughs> yep, you guessed it, another Excision collaboration, this time on the track Rumble, which I mentioned at the start, coming out of nowhere and released on Never Say Die. But as you can see, there is a massive history behind this guy, a fruitful and at times complex one at that. All of which leads to Overdrive. And huge credit must be given to Space Laces, Never Say Die and everyone on those teams for getting everyone so incredibly excited for a single project. Very much working off the fact that many already view him as one of bass music's most important figures without him even having one multi-track release to his name. Honestly, to think that this is his debut EP is crazy because he seems like a veteran, but it's reflective of just how many game-changing tracks he has put out so far. So it comes as no real surprise that when news broke that we'd be getting a first full-length EP from Slider, released on Dubstep's historically most significant label, excitement within the scene went through the roof. But what is it exactly that Slider has become renowned for? What are the aspects of his music that have got him this level of acclamation, in spite of his reticence as a personality? A predominantly dubstep producer who has dipped into house and electro structures every now and then, as I mentioned. But I would argue it's his staple synths and booming atmospheric percussion that have made his production style so identifiable and particular to him. One of the thickest, most well-rounded, yet simultaneously exhilarating styles you're going to find in bass music. Deep, stretchy belch noises mixed with an array of huge tears and gnashes, all atop quite bouncy and rhythmical backdrops, the emphasis of which is on creating that spacey, echoey vibe. All the while infusing his sound with a mass of zaps and lasers that are on hand to transport you to unimagined worlds where machines rule in the most merciless of ways. All of which are abundant in this EP, ensuring that Space Lace's first multi-track project is an undeniable continuation and representation of his spellbinding style. 
In that sense, Overdrive does the job as a very statement-making EP, the sounds and structures of the most impactful parts, the drops, showing listeners exactly what he's about. Even from the first note of the first drop of the title track, that attention-grabbing low-end thump, you know it's a Space Laces tune. The electric fuzziness of it screeches amidst the bouncy backdrop, the skittish moments after the first sequence are so captivating, and the way he makes the screeches take a back seat as the grunginess comes to the fore is a very considered development. The second drop being more spaced out with the screeches, inviting you to rock your head back and move to it, quite simply a very good demonstration of his sound, making a statement in the process. Such an amazing presence to this track, the way the percussion draws it to a close with those fidgety sounds in the background, winding it down, presenting a chance to reflect on this emphatic opener. The statement making continues into the second track Kaiju, but in a completely different sense, Slider showing us that he can fit his style into a completely different structure, notably a bass house one. It's in the double drop to this track, starting at 1 minute 18, that he really comes into his own, a mad sequence full of brutal tears and scratches, interjecting zaps, demonic belches. The tears and scratches becoming more mind melting as it progresses, leaving you wondering just two tracks in as to whether there's any dark electronic music structure that he can't fit his sound into. The second drop extending this query even further, as he stretches out the original drop in this gargantuan bellowing release. More drawn out, emphatic, enduring, all of the tears and scratches and croaky sounds coming together and working to full effect. I feel like one could also stake a claim to Space Lace's five tracks here, verging on the frightening and monstrous, the pinnacle of this coming in his collaboration with Getter, entitled Choppers. A collaboration that I'm not sure anyone could have seen coming, it's one of those that you dream of happening. As I said, the EP has that helter-skelter scariness to it, but the first drop to this track is the first moment where I feel truly petrified. It's just top-notch distortion dubstep music, violent in the best possible way. A drop that is as blinding as it is heavy, it's just one hit of frazzling electric bass after another, enough to fry your mind. The development to that first drop being even more animated and intoxicating really leaves a mark on you, just what we had originally but maxed out even further. A track that revels in its nastiness, wave after wave of filth, I love every interjecting sound here, it's fiery, it's brutal, it's ravenous. The huge bass sounds here also play a massive part in its bone rattling appeal, genuinely had me squirming in my seat. And in that respect, it is the sounds themselves, more than the ideas per se, that he lets do the talking for the most part. The beauty of Choppers, for example, lies somewhat in its simplicity, the sounds used being the thing that carries it through in the effect they have on us. But this is most noticeable, I feel, in the fifth track, Talk, and you may not like me for saying this, but he really makes the classic hard trap synth his own. Rollercoaster dubstep madness overflowing with bass and screeches, lovely fidgety, twisted distortion to it too. The wubs here enveloping you before spitting you back out again, Slider really trying to give us that vivid surround sound experience. A song that gives ample space to the sounds in its drops, signalling their importance within the track. Again, I'm enjoying the simple structures on show here. It has its jittery, staggered moments, but I think more than anything, this track shows us how vital simplicity can be in getting the message of a song across. On that note, I think it's also worth talking about just how real and alive some of these sounds are, as if they're right in front of you, in the flesh. It's absolutely nuts. The metallic industrial chime notes in the first drop to Kaiju are so present, not to mention the grungy sounds laced within that section too. The glitchy start to the build of Choppers, where so much is going on, is like binary code flickering on a screen. But it's on the fourth track Cheeseburger that we are really taken on a journey down the rabbit hole of imagery. Straight in there with the swampy marshiness, crunching sounds, oozy sounds, laser sounds. <laughs> Wriggling and writhing everywhere, a real muddy plumpness to every effect, belching frogs crawling around you, takes us underwater and back to the surface. I really like how it goes from being quite in your face to other points where it's not as intense. 
So, so vivid. It's like I'm on another planet witnessing the mutation of an alien creature coming out of its shell. Basically, it's tracks like this that remind me why he collaborated with snails. And contrary to what I was saying earlier, it's with this track, a less outlandish and more toned down number, that I feel like this EP is more of a journey than a statement maker. With Cheeseburger acting as a perfect moment of respite, being the fourth track following three outright bangers, and set up for the following two big numbers to come. Essential for this EP, not only in showing yet another style of music that Space Lace's sound can be expressed through, but also for the fact that it's not quite as outlandish and glaring. Obviously the sound design on Cheeseburger is incredible, arguably the most notable on the EP, but it also serves its purpose as the more toned down track of the six. Throwing one intense sound after another at you, I feel like I'm in a swamp, but ultimately it's a welcomed break from the chaos provided by the other five tracks, expertly placed in the track listing. The short and sweet nature of it also ensuring that said break is a brief one, so we can crack right on with the iconic build in talk and the heaviness that follows, Ivory Remix included. I'm now going to talk about the sheer swagger, bounce and swing of this thing because it's just such a fundamental part of Overdrive, a real might and presence evident from the very first track. Even in the songs where it really changes tack, structure wise for Kaiju, sound wise for Cheeseburger, there's a very noticeable swing and rhythm to the interaction between all its component parts. And reverting back to the statement making or journey distinction with this EP, there's one aspect of it that could constitute as the latter in and of themselves, and that's the introductions. The early morning glow of the EP's opening is a very inviting and alluring one, with an unerringly warm musicality to it. Those piercing siren synths acting like beams of light pouring through the crevices, a beautiful way to welcome us into the EP. Also really enjoying the hip hop, boxing fight preamble section that follows this, a complete juxtaposition but necessary in gearing us up for the battle that this EP's dubstep presents. Furthermore, the pulsating opening to talk acts very much as a warning, with some underlying jabs amidst an atmospheric, spacey, echoey setting, as if in a chamber. The jabs getting fuzzier and alert in what is an iconic sounding build, I feel like they're taken from somewhere but I can't quite think where. Either that or Slider has come up with something truly extraordinary here, the latent menace of it giving us the feeling that we're up against the order or establishment, full of adrenaline and ready to do battle. Moreover, the fact that there are several instances where the introduction is also the outro shows how significant they are as parts of these songs and the EP overall. It's further evidence of the fact that he just has the dynamic between everything so on point. The intros influence the builds, which work towards the drops, little bits of contrast between all of these sections, mix downs are seamless in their transitions. Kaiju is literally space laces on a bass house track, it may not have the fluidity of a normal bass house tune, but that's what I love about it, the grating nature of the space lace sound, having a fun and uninhibited go at the bass house structure. The brass elements also having a massive say in the versatility of this track, uh, the intro sounding like some sort of homage to Simon Says Get the Fuck Up, as well as Bad Man Ridden by Veto Gonzalez. <laughs> Jeez, I forgot how much of a tune that is actually. The vibe in Kaiju from start to finish, between two completely different drops, is honestly remarkable. Everything comes together so well. In the title track, there's a great dynamic between the heavy stuff and the intro, midsection and outro parts. Transcending seamlessly back into that early morning glow section whenever it does, 
getting right back into the swing of it without any sort of dissonance between individual sections. On Choppers, Getta lends some crispy percussion and gloomy hip-hop rap synths, which I'd say are more preparatory than scene-setting. And what's interesting about the sole collaboration on this EP is that the intro and drop are clearly driven by one artist each, but both sections are also clearly influenced by the other producer. The intro being mostly Getta, the drop being mostly Space Laces, but you can hear both in both, it's so fantastically well put together. An epic pairing for sure, and perhaps a fitting way for Getter to sign off from Dark Electronic Music altogether. As sad as that sounds, it seems like it's true. Another thing that Space Laces has become renowned for in recent years are the ending vocal samples to his tracks, and the ones used here are classically hilarious. The first two are a bringing together of completely different samples, surreal but also very well done. We must do this again sometime. No. You know what it means to lose someone you love. No. <laughs> oh god, that's so funny. The third has a lovely droplet sound in it. Ish? <laughs> and the fourth just goes ham on the burger sample. Cheese burger. <laughs> but I'd definitely say that he saves the funniest for last in the ending to talk. What touch you around here again? I'm gonna make you suck my <laughs> At which point we know that Space Lace's work here is done, a very appropriate note for him to leave on. Which leads me right on to the closing track on Overdrive, Ivory's remix of Cruise Control. A fantastic platform for the young Frenchman to do his thing and make his own statement with Slider already having done so. Waking us up to his style with a grand opening full of heroic drums and haunting enchanting strings. Before a drop that has that vintage ivory alert punchiness while still having a smattering of Space Laces sounds in there, cacophonous and contained, nothing too flashy. Something I also noticed having reviewed his next level EP earlier this year as well, He's really good at making the vocal blend into the drop, with the sample melting perfectly into his thumping sound. The final stepping notes at 3 minutes 42 are a great end to the heaviness, an abrupt finish into zaps, mellow undertones, everything faint and winding down. The EP fading off into the distance before that final kick and vocal sample, the emphatic, definitive ending that it desired. Some really subtle but spicy moments of variation here, Nice prehistoric vibe, lens from the original but still has that ivory feel to it. He's really going places. And rounding up my thoughts here somewhat, I can't go on without bringing up some aspects of the EP that I think could have been tinkered with slightly. It's not all fun and games. There could be an argument for some of the drop ideas lacking a little, points bereft of enough ingenuity and variety to really take you aback. But this thought is quite easy to refute and the reason is twofold. Firstly, for anyone that may think this, I mean that's to be expected, there's so much else on offer in terms of the overall personality of his sound, there's bound to be a couple of things you don't enjoy about it. Additionally, I think this minimalistic note placement approach, evident in several tracks here, is just how he does things quite frankly. As I discussed earlier, the beauty of his music lies in appreciating the sounds more than the ideas, so having that incessancy may seem frazzling, but it allows you to really appreciate just how fleshed out it is. As I said, definitely moments where there could have been a little bit more variation, but to be honest, I feel like there's enough of that across the six tracks. His sound stretches out really well over the EP. An EP that works simply because it is so distinctively him, this is the statement-making project he needed under his belt, and in terms of it being undeniably his, He's executed it with aplomb. Now a couple other little moments that I would love to mention before giving you my closing thoughts on Overdrive. What a fantastic introducing vocal sample. Yes, we know what it's about. It's a Space Laces EP and we're damned excited for it. In Kaiju, the end to the first drop sequence is riveting with that glitchy little moment at 1 minute 44, then those pulsating, vacuous sounds going into the midsection. Mm. 
In choppers, those yo and OK vocal samples are brilliant and keep the track ticking along really nicely. The cheese interruptions towards the end of Cheeseburger are just such a Space Laces thing, reminding us once again of his propensity to not take everything music related too seriously. In talk, the seizing, bubbly appeal to those gurgled sounds littered throughout the track are sumptuous. <laughs> And the way Ivory reveals a desolate land following his enchanting opening sequence, also making his zaps seem like they're descending onto the ground from above, very cool. There's just so much to this EP, god I can't keep up with it all. I could even have dedicated a whole section to the percussion in this thing, but that would literally have made it so much longer. You know, I can't just dip my feet in, I have to go full throttle in my analysis of it. But all in all, is Overdrive more of a statement maker or a journey? Six tracks here constituting as a fantastic debut exhibition of his sound and style, but it's also got that directional awareness from track to track, so maybe it's both. It's usually the case that EPs, coming in mostly at four tracks, are just collections of bangers without a real arc to them, but at six tracks, Overdrive has a clear trajectory and flow from beginning to end. He gives listeners the sounds that they have come to love him for, whilst also creating a story. It's quite a feat and exactly what is needed for a debut EP. I'm really enjoying Overdrive and more so with each listen. I can definitely see it being one of those amazing slow burners that just reveals more sides to itself as I listen to it again and again. Understanding each song more and more, not only individually, but within the context of the EP. A project that is just one huge combustible chemical reaction that is ready to explode and erupt at every moment. Stacked with pretty much everything one could ask for in a Space Laces EP, it's got verve, it's got force, musicality, seizing dubstep, changes in tempo structure, there's loads to it. Brimming to the point of overdrive, some may say. Some people talking of how he's reinventing dubstep with this EP, which I think is a step too far for any project, let alone just this one, but I'll be interested to see how it holds up as both something to be replicated and something that cannot be replicated at all. Will people copy his style and give it their own twist, or will they appreciate it, give it its own space and leave it alone to exist in and of itself? I think it deserves the latter. Because in terms of best EPs of the year, I mean, this one is definitely up there. Just look at how much I've talked about it. Hopefully now people will stop badgering him to make new music as well. We need to round as one to celebrate and enjoy this EP and Lord Ian in the process. On a wholly different note, yet another reason for me to go to Lost Lands as if I needed one. Now in terms of a favourite from Overdrive, then I'm very much torn between Kaiju and Choppers. The former is the most exciting for me of the six, and I love hearing the second drop in light of the first, and the latter is just a fantastic collaboration between two really good producers, which is rare. And in terms of a recommendation for something similar, if you enjoyed this EP, there are none. It's Space Laces. And so that is that for another review on the Naughty Step channel, this time of the debut EP from Space Laces released on Never Say Die, Overdrive, thank you very much and as always for tuning in. Especially if you've got this far because I mean bloody hell it's been quite a long review. Be sure to leave a comment with your thoughts on Overdrive, what did you guys make of it, which track was your favourite of the six, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review then be sure to give it a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, hitting that notification bell along the way so you can be notified whenever I upload to the Naughty Step channel. Next to my head there should be some other Never Say Die reviews on the channel, so if you enjoyed this one then be sure to check those out too. And don't forget to like and follow Naughty Step across and don't forget to like and follow Naughty Step across all social media, the links to which are in the description box down below. And lastly, if it's naughty, then you know guys, so be sure as always to keep it naughty and stay safe. And I shall see you all in the next one. Peace out.